All right, I'll bring him on. I'll bring him on. Hold on. I got to close a few things out. Okay, you guys ready? Hey, Head Ringer, how you doing? Uh-oh, hold on. I killed Burp Suit and I can't see anything now. All right, let's do it. Hey, how you doing, man? Hi, man. Good, you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you joining me on a Sunday. I know it's a little bit late your time. Uh, it's fine. So for those of late. my viewers that don't know, you go by the name Inhibitor181. You are also a million dollar hacker on Hacker One just recently. Uh, yep. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Um, how did you get started? How long have you been hacking? Uh, yeah, so my name is Kosmin, Romanian, 30 years old, living in Germany for uh, the past six years. Uh, and yeah, hacking. been doing hacking in a little more serious way, like three years and a little, and full time for almost two years. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's really funny how I started hacking. Uh, I was a developer, okay. and we're allowed to, uh, each year like to pick a, like our development or something, uh, like a seminar. And I chose a hacking seminar with a few developers in Hamburg, and there I actually learned about the existence of bug bounty platforms. I never actually had an active interest, you know, like to, to search for hacking sides or how to improve my skills so i decided to join and actually like, like falling in love with it that's very cool um what do you remember what conference that was uh i know it was uh, our teacher was david vieira kurtz um i don't remember i think it's a hack attack oh I very cool it's called yes yes hack attack i think yeah. <laughs> so you said you've been hacking bug bounties for a few years and then full time for two years? Yeah, almost two years. I think I'm going to make in May two years. So I did it like in the beginning uh, in my free time. But basically the first five months, it was uh, miserable because I didn't know like what to submit, what the mm. programs were actually interested in. I think I had like a negative signal. So yeah. You know, everybody's there at the beginning. <laughs> so you went from a negative signal to becoming <laughs> a million dollar bounty hunter in just about a few years. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did you figure out what the, you know, you just said that when I first started, I didn't know what to submit and what the companies wanted. How did you figure it out? Uh, so basically, I submitted like, um, I got a bunch of different stuff. And there were uh, partially like some SPF records disclosed, some WordPress XML RPC.php disclosed, yada, yada, yada. I start submitting like those stupid things. Uh, and I figure out that, no, that's, that's, that's not the way, you know? And then I just stopped submitting this. So basically I start submitting everything that was higher as an XSS. So XSS was like the lowest issue. Uh, and then things got like a lot, a lot better. And I didn't know how to write a report. That's mm -hmm. really, that's a really critical step to actually learn how to write the report and uh, figure out the program, what the program wants. Because every, every program is different. Mm -hmm. Like if they have like a wild card, they care about their assets. They don't, if they have like their application, just don't go out of scope if they, they, they don't care about that. So like, yeah, like in the program. And oh. basically I've, I'm stuck. I've act on a program. It's a private program. Now, like, uh, I think 80% uh, of my time I do that program. Wow. Yeah. So basically one. Program. So what made the, what, at what, at what point, like at what point did you go, 
bug bounties is what I want to do full time. What made the change? Like what caused you to go, I want to do bug bounties full time? Uh, basically, I was really bogged of my actual job. I didn't have the pleasure in doing it anymore because I've, I've done it for like almost nine years, I think. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, it was going really fast. Uh, and it was like automation, same, same stuff every time, boring meetings, uh, complaints from the customers, from the Q&A team. It was really boring, you know, and what I really you enjoyed actually. What were you doing? Uh, so you could say full stack developer oh. in the e-commerce platform. Yeah, it's a proprietary platform. It was pretty big. Like we had like 200 like shops linked with on one instance. It was a multi shop concept, so All to right. say. Uh, yeah. So, so did, uh, did being a full stack developer help you with bug bounties at all? Uh, so I think it uh, actually helped me a bit on my mentality. Um, and also knowing JavaScript and HTML very good made uh, some things easier, but it's definitely not a requirement. I know a lot of good people that uh, don't actually code that much. That's and what I, I was getting uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, you don't need to know it. It also helped me build some uh tools that have like really specific um um like they do one small thing but they, they do it pretty good you know very specific to my private program do you have i'm curious to know do you have any security certificates oscp ch do you care for nope. any of those mm, uh, in this moment like uh, on 30 x all i don't care much no you don't wow that's very that's that's fair i mean i don't have i don't have any credentials myself i don't have any um certificates myself and i i, I understand that not wanting to have it but you know it helps sense it, i want to make sense of like how you became so good at what you do from being a full stack developer to getting bored with your job I mean, did you have security background when you were doing full stack development uh not necessarily like i had to deal with the security part of the e-commerce platform but uh, actually, if I look now <laughs> on how I was there, no, yeah, I, I could say that I actually didn't have uh, that good of a background. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, just, just read, read everything you can, like, basically. So talk to me on, about how did you learn? What, how did, did you go to OWASP Top 10 and learn those bug types? What, did you use DVWA? What, how did you learn about hacking? How did you learn hacking yourself on your own? Uh, basically, Twitter. Um, and... Uh, no, no, just Twitter, you know, just follow the right people uh, and read every article I could um, about different stuff. And uh, also the really helped me the hacker one disclosed uh, reports. Those are actually quite a gold mine for me. Wow. They're, they're, they're really, really important to, to, to learn the insights, the good and the bad, uh, you know. So, yeah, basically just read every article I could. Wow. I'm actually, for example, um, a lot of people uh, do CTFs. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I, I've been doing lately Pentester Lab, uh, and that, that actually helped me. Like, do you do uh, Pentester lately, Lab? Like, yeah, no, lately, like mm -hmm. in the past six months. <laughs> wow, you just started <laughs> yeah, doing so it's quite good. Yeah, 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 exactly. They so, had the, that Black Friday promotion, so I got one year subscription. And it's pretty <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> That's very awesome, man. That's very cool. So tell me, um, who you said that Twitter was a very good place for you to learn. Yep. Um, who are some people you recommend people to follow, people that are new who want to learn about uh, bug bounty hunting and people that are new to this journey? Who are some people that you, you recommend that you learn the most from? Hmm. So that's quite a good question. Um, I don't think I have like my favorite uh, researcher, my favorite blog poster, okay. uh, because basically there were uh, usually like, retweets, likes. So I started, of course, I looked in um, HackerOne's uh, leaderboard, started okay. uh, following people there. Occasionally nice. they retweeted and I followed them. There, there are a lot of 
great people that uh, share a lot of blog posts uh, in this moment. Yeah. Uh, of course, Stock does amazing content Absolutely. for uh, newcomers. Absolutely. And the videos really help. I yeah. uh, actually didn't watch videos uh, before, but uh, watching them in the last like, months, maybe years, uh, they're, they're really good. They're really good. Uh, but so, you need to invest time. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's of a... It's not so much of a who you follow and how you follow people. It's just investing yeah. your time into oh, yeah, what matters to you, per se. Interesting. Yes, yes. Very invest cool. a lot of time. You you need to... It, it's it's a steep learning curve. It's a very steep. It's a... That and it's a, it's a huge time suck. Like, you need to spend a lot of time in order to, you know, become better. How long did it take you to find your first bug? I'm curious to know. <laughs> I think my actually first valid bug was after like two or three months. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it it wasn't. Uh, it was also it was nothing spectacular. Uh, and then I got um, a good streak on a program. I think it's a public one, uh, Open Exchange. Okay. Something some email um, uh, email service. I got suit or something um and then i started getting some private invites i did there a bit i also did a bug a bug crowd uh, a bit okay. back that time um and then i got my invite to my private program for some reason and uh, it's been quite a long long ride <laughs> for that program because it was it was never like a straight line you know like a, like you learn like this because also I learned something, then nothing, then something else, nothing, something else. So it was like a constant growth, but not a continuous one, you know. And for me, it was really important to spend my time on a big private uh, program uh, with high payments. Because even if I didn't find anything, I would learn more about the architecture um, of that platform, of that program. I imagine how it looked like and then an API and then another API and then some weird configuration issues. So it was like a build up process. So we're getting into, we're getting into the weeds of doing recon. Let's just jump into it. Uh, okay. What does recon mean to you? Um, yeah. So for re recon, I'm not that uh, good, uh, especially on like horizontal recon. Uh, so basically I did a, uh, I stacked a bunch of tools. I can check now which one of those. So I use like Sensi, Subfinder, Knock, V, Sublist, Rakuten, Find Domains, and Asset Finder. So basically, I run, it's a script that runs everything, then makes the results unique. Then I run HTTP probe, then scan it. And this can also make delta. So if like I run something today and I run in like one month, I have the delta. It's just like what changed, you know? Okay. And that's my horizontal recon, like nothing else. Uh, I try to specialize on like the vertical recon, the recon inside the app. So Google is very good. It's your it's best friend. Awesome tool. Yeah, Google, uh, Wayback Machine. Yep. Uh, There's another tool, uh, Gao or something that checks, uh, I think, Wayback Machine and two other stuff i what tried hot call uh, let me see if i have it gao yeah gao how do you spell that g-a-u um g-a-u okay I, I think i hopefully i'm not gonna mess this up i think cdl wrote it oh yeah i think i know what you're talking about now yeah it's called get all urls Yes, exactly that. What Hazana said. Get I just, all your there guys. Go. Hazana yes. posted it. Thank you, Hazana. I appreciate it. Exactly that one. Uh, yeah, and I also tried uh, Hawk Crawler uh, from Luke, and uh, I had some results with it on my uh, private program, but nothing spectacular. Uh, and also, the JavaScript files are a very big treasure trove. So let's talk about JavaScript files. Um, what do you do in JavaScript files? What do you look for? How do you like? What is the objective when you look at JavaScript files? What is the end goal? Finding API endpoints. <laughs> How? So m my methodology is uh, it's pretty simple. 
So I take one, I, I don't use any tools. It's manual. I don't even unminify them because okay. uh, like the technique is pretty simple, but for me, it has very good results. So basically you take one endpoint that's already known. Then you search it in the JavaScript file. And then you see how the structure looks like, like how it's called, you know, okay. like with post, with get, with Ajax, or uh, like the stock in the variable. And then I search for like this suffix, the similar suffix. And that usually has zero false positives. Wow. Because you, you like search for how it should look like in the in the beginning, you know? But does it make sense? Or it I does. Explain it but <laughs> what I want to know is, so how do you do it at scale? Like, how are you, are you manually looking at all these JavaScript files and looking for particular things? Or do you have a script that pulls these JavaScript files, structures them for you, highlights them for you? Do you use things like Link Finder or JS Parser, for example? Uh, no, I didn't. I don't use that, those tools because I was not satisfied with the results. Oh. Uh, there were a lot of garbage in there, and I had to actually go through that. Uh, on a large scale, so if I'm at a live hacking event, I do it manually. On my main program, I have some tools that uh, can parse right? because I already know the structure. Mm -hmm. They parse it and they build something and save it. So basically, I can just browse the link normally in bug. Then I go to target. I just show JavaScript files. I save all the contents you know, without page 64 encoding the request and the response. Then I paste it in a file, run that script, and I have all the endpoints. Wow, very, that's very cool. So you also yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a spe specifically built script file that does that. Wow. So how much do you rely on automation? Is um, do you what what kind of things do you automate when it comes down to hacking? And what things do you not want to automate to get you know? There are some things that you have to automate because it's just a task after task you always do. But there are some things that you do manual. I assume which ones do you do manual? Uh, manually basically everything except XSS's because on it, for XSS's there's a bug plugin for that so I don't actually spend time doing that wow, cool. uh, it's called Reflectog you can uh, search it it's on GitHub it's not on bug app store it's an amazing plugin that actually finds uh, reflected XSS's uh, kind of it's not passive because uh, so basically you access a URL yeah uh, and it, it it checks if a parameter is reflected in the response. If it's reflected in the response, uh, it remakes the same request one time with a pretty harmless payload, like single quote, double quote, bigger than, smaller than, blah, 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 and checks to see if the parameter, the input parameter is reflected back in the response and sanitized. And also really cool because it also identifies when it breaks out of context. And because of this, because you don't have like a dangerous or a malicious payload, the WAFs usually don't block it. And then you, can, you have to uh, manually bypass the WAF if there is a WAF. But I have some pretty good results. And uh, checking for XSSs, uh, uh, it takes too much time. No. Do you not uh, like do you like looking for XSS at all? Do you is that a part of your methodology or is it something you don't look for as much? Uh just stored XSS is basically that plugin that everybody is good on on chat uh, does a pretty good job and I'm satisfied. I, I know I'm missing a lot of stuff, but uh, the the amount of time I would spend checking for those does not is not uh, it's not bigger than the winnings so to so here's my question. You mentioned you use Reflector as a Burp Suite that you use, Burp Suite plugin that you use, correct? Yes. What other Burp Suite plugins do you use? Are there any p plugins that you really enjoy using that's made your life easier, helps you find bugs um, that you know you could you could share with everybody else? Uh, yeah, JSON Beautifier. Absolutely, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yep, yep. Content Type Converter. It's also really helpful. Okay. Um, authorize. It's very good yep. in certain contexts. I think Fisher has a video which talk about it. He explains okay. it very good. Um, upload scanner. It's an awesome tool. 
Uh, cool. Pretty hard to set up in the beginning, but it helps you automate. And uh, this reflector one. Oh, Paraminer. I use it nonstop. Per it's, Paraminer? It's, it's, yeah. Very Paraminer cool. Is Talk awesome. to me. Why do, you, why do you like it so much? Uh, because it finds uh, hidden inputs. And um, basically, I found I found everything with this. Almost everything. I found SSRFs with this, actually. Yeah. Wow. So it was an SSRF. Yeah, because it was like a parameter that uh, was somehow interpreted in the proxy layer, and you could just write a random host, and it would actually retrieve uh, retrieve the contents of that host in the response. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, so and the XSSs, of course, in that case, I manually test them. So if I uh, identify uh, uh, an URL that's um, reflect that's like the secret, I uh, test for it manually to see if the contents are uh, reflected back and sanitized. Wow. And also for Hedex, cool. you have interesting. Yeah, also for Hedex, you can have SSRFs uh, from Hedex. Wow, very, very cool. So I, I, I assume that SSRF is one of your favorite bugs. No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I like hearing that. Okay. What is your favorite Vuln type? Uh, you can see information disclosure. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, I dogs misconfigurations. Wow. Stuff like that. That yeah. yeah, yeah. That I usually try to focus on um, personal identifiable information disclosure. Usually. Okay. So let's talk about um, I doors and information disclosures a little bit. For somebody who wants to learn how to find those, what um, advice do you have? How is the best way to look for those? Um, how did you How did you learn to look for those? Um, hmm. So, get your endpoints. Um, API is, of course, a pretty good uh, a pretty good source of potential ad docs, mm -hmm. uh, and. Just think about it. this software, this API, this site was written by a bunch of people, people that should respect like a structure, like how I did when I was a developer. Yeah? So, for example, if you can see that in many endpoints in like the slash search or the slash programs, they have a parameter that's called search underscore string. Yeah. And you can type in the search there. Then if the maybe the user's parameter has a search function, the parameter is the same, like stuff like that. I know it sounds pretty weird, but uh, if you actually realize that the software was written by other people, other team of people, many people that should work on a standard, you can start seeing like patterns yep. in their how they uh, name parameters, how they name endpoints, and stuff like that. Like what's an old code. Like, um, yeah, stuff like that, and check every uh, parameter you can. Uh, for me, I usually do manual uh, manual testing on iDocs and oh. everything, and Paraminer, of course, that uh, can find parameters. So, I, I assume that you know, those stuff like parameter finding and you know, the tools that you use is, it plays a huge role in your bug bounty hunting, uh, yes. So of course, I should defer in this moment about my private program where I spend most of my time. Uh, lately, I've been doing like a small switching. So I learned the application quite a lot. Okay. And then and now I'm like expanding because I already know how to identify certain classes of issues there. So I switched a bit to, 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 to the, the this horizontal scanning. Um, and here, actually, what helps me, what helped me a bit, is pretty weird. Like, also, uh, this month at the, the event, I talked to some people, and they were like, "Oh, why do you do this? This is overly complicated, stuff like that." I, I, I pretty much use just burp. I uh, don't use uh, dig search or fuff. I've actually tried it. Late, lately, it's okay, but it doesn't help me. So I use Intruder a lot. And if I want to like check when a, a, a request, a specific request on many hosts, that, that's this kind of a limitation on bug. But it's not. You can just uh, write your own script, host your VPS or your local host, 
whatever. That's right. basically an SSRF by design. So you can ha you you have like an URL parameter as a get as an input, and you run it against multiple hosts. And this uh, your script will relay the the request you send it a get a post or whatever uh, to that parameter, and you'll have the res response. And the trick here is actually an intruder. I um, don't store the requests. I don't store the responses. So basically, a blank request. But I use grep extract, and grep extract actually searches the response for a specific regex, and then returns it in the table of the of uh, results. And then I can save this table for future use. It's extremely fast. Wow. Uh, yeah, and it it doesn't eat my memory or anything, my RAM, my store, because I don't store the requests and the responses. So yeah, it's pretty weird technique, but uh, yeah, it's, I think it's because I'm using Burp a lot, and I don't think that this is actually that good. I, I don't have like my arsenal of tools that I usually use, just Burp. So here's my question. So do you, you use Burp, you said, and you also mentioned yeah. that you use some uh, automation. Do you do the automation straight from your own network and your computer, or do you do it on a VPS, through, or do you do it through a VPN? How does that work? It's split. Uh, so a part of it is on my computer, a part of it is on my VPS. Yes, I have something uh, from DigitalOcean. Really happy about it. Uh, the recon script that actually finds all the subdomains to my VPS, I don't run it from my computer. Uh, but the tools for the vertical recon are on my computer. So, yeah, that so split it. You split, yeah, so you, there's something you need to do on your computer, like Burp, you use it on your computer. But if it's scripts running, you do it on Digital Ocean. Yes. Very cool. So, talk to me about your favorite Vuln type. What kind of uh, vulnerabilities do you uh, prioritize when you, you're giving a new target, not for a target that you already know. When someone's giving you a okay. new target, let's, let's, let's take a step back. When someone, when you're given a new target, especially in life hacking event, it's a target you have never hacked on. How does that mm -hmm. work? What do you start with? What do you start with, you know, if you had to go step, I don't want you to give me like step by step exactly what you do, but kind of like a high level, where do you start? What do you look for? And what do you prioritize? Uh, it's okay, so folks run that. Yeah, I run. I, I try to find some interesting subdomains and check them uh, manually. Uh, and f in the first day, I usually try to have an overview of the application. Uh, then maybe I focused. I try to like um, do some sort of compactment. First. For example, I want to look at the API, then I want to look at the login process, uh, then I read the documentation, uh, and, and I switch them to keep things fresh, you know? And because of this, after a few days of actually testing various compartments, I can then check how the these compartments interact with each other. And those uh, are actually where I find interesting uh, interesting issues. In like how a component component interacts with another component. Very cool. So here's the thing: um, life hacking events. Do you usually work solo, or do you work with other folks? Do you collaborate? Uh, sometimes I collaborate. I uh, start solo, but uh, if I have something interesting, I uh, collaborate with other people. I have some few collaborations. I can say uh, I don't have a favorite person. Um, but I don't actually uh, want to start from the beginning as a team because um, I, I think that uh, sometimes you feel the other person is not investing as much time as you are and stuff like that, or you are like hindered uh, because the you talk to your other team members and say, yeah, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. And maybe I wanted to look at those things right. because I was in the mood to look at those things. You know, like it of course, of course has um, advantages working on a team right. because you go very deep in the app, you know, packed and you can find lots of interesting things, but it also limits you. 
Is um is collaboration important in bug bounties? You think? Like, is it a is it a good thing to collaborate with other hackers, or why? Or of why course, not? no. Of course, don't get me wrong. Collaboration it's very good. It's it's very very good, but not to actually start as a team from the beginning. Right. That's what I do not want to do. Collaboration. I'm all for. I share my findings. Uh, I do it. Also, people come to me. It's very nice. You learn a lot of things. But starting as a team for me is not that good. And also think about that I'm doing this uh, full time. So I have a lot of time <laughs> to put into those events. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about being a full time hacker. Um, do you have a routine? Do you, you know, do you work nine to five on bug bounties and then take the rest of the day off? Or do you hack whenever you feel like it? How does that work as a full bug bounty hunter? Uh, so basically, I uh, I hack, I work uh, while my wife is working. Uh, she has uh, she doesn't have like a fixed schedule. She works on shifts, okay. so sometimes I hack from eight to three, four, or two, or sometimes from eleven to eight, stuff like that. But if I don't feel like hacking, or I I feel that I'm maybe tired or not in the mood, not. Uh, just not good that day. Right. I just stop and do something else. I, I don't care. Okay. I'm just because I no, I'm not I'm not efficient in that moment. <laughs> yeah, but how do you? So I, I assume that you know, like like everybody else, you have days when you don't find vulnerabilities. You know, you have days yeah. you find a ton. You have days you don't find anything. Um, how do you deal with that? It's it's fine. <laughs> it's it's really it's fine. Uh, I'm sufficiently financially stable to actually don't care that much okay. so and of course everybody has those uh, those days those weeks maybe even months it can happen uh, maybe i sometimes just do something else do some pen tester, pen tester lab or i just relax go out yeah. with dogs or stuff like that then come back um uh, yeah it's basically it's 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 fixed. I have like a small issue now with my right. my life balance is a little off because I work sometimes too much because I enjoy it and it breaks a little bit of this having having no structure is not that good, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel I'm close to a burnout, uh, but it may happen. So I need to make some changes for me. You said um, burnouts. And that's something that I always ask my guests. Do you deal with burnouts a lot? Uh, no, because if, it's exactly that thing. That if I'm not in the mood, I just don't do it. Because I know I'm not efficient. And if I'm in the mood, I do it a lot. Uh, and as burnouts, um, maybe I had just once. And then I took uh, a week off, and it was all good. Okay. Um, and I, 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 it's also important to say that uh, if I go on vacation, I never ever take my laptop with me or anything, uh, and I prefer going to the mountains. And I think that that helps quite a lot. So you completely disconnect. Yeah, I completely disconnect. Last uh, on my last vacation, I didn't have internet for a week. Nice. Something. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you familiar with the um, imposter syndrome? Do you know what that is? Uh, no. So imposter syndrome is the fear of thinking like you're a fraud or you don't know a lot about the subject that you're good at. Do you deal with that a lot? I see you smiling. Do you deal with that a lot? Yes, I have that. <laughs> I, I always know there's more to learn about the subject. Yeah. How do you deal with it? How yeah. do you when you know you don't know something? How do you deal with it? Uh, I try to, I Google everything I can. I read articles, uh, then I try to reproduce them in a controlled environment, uh, basically. Yeah, for example, the of course, the desync attack was something that I was like, well, this is cool, but right. I don't know anything about that. Same. I started, yeah, reading. I never actually uh, found in a bug bounty something similar but i i think i know the theory but i'm like miles away so pretty much if i find that something would be vulnerable to something 
then in that moment, I get really motivated and just don't do anything else until I can fully exploit that thing. And that, in that moment, I learn a lot about the vulnerability type. So you said something about like uh, new attacks, like uh, desync stuff. When there is a new research that comes out or there's a new vuln type or attack vector that comes out, how do you learn those? How do you practice those to get better at? Well, I'm pretty bad at this, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, just uh, Google them, read what I can, uh, trying to search on GitHub okay. stuff, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bad at those, actually. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the same time, though, like, it's, it's, you, you do some stuff, like when you, when you see a new concept that really interests you, you're going to find a way to learn it, right? No matter if you're yeah. good at it or not. But I want to understand, how, do you just go and start searching for it in a bug bounty program after you learn everything? Uh, I, I never did that, actually. I, I like the process of learning. I really do it. I learn it until I'm pretty confident then i i know at least how to identify the existence of that bug mm -hmm. and in that moment I actually go deep uh more deep I, it's, it's it's yeah it's, it's pretty weird because um i think this is uh some sort of uh like a mental thing i have from while i was a dev okay. um i had to know the existence of ways to do stuff and that was a really important part and if i know about the existence of the things then i started to look deep in that subject until i was huh. pretty confident i knew more about it like if you don't know that something exists that that's that's the worst part but if you know it exists then you know how to search it and then to dig deeper into that matter and to learn more very cool. That's awesome, man. I appreciate you sharing all that. Um, let's talk about motivation. What keeps you motivated to keep on hacking and keep on looking for more bugs? Is it monetary? Is it personal? Um, what keeps you motivated? Uh, first of all, because I'm kind of a little obsessed, uh, I really love it. And this is the most important part to actually do something I like, something I love, something that I want to do. So this is the most important part. Uh, the second one, um, the second and the third I, are the financial aspect and my I'm very competitive. Uh, and I try to be the, not the best, but on one of the top people. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed. It's pretty weird, but yeah. Something like I, that. I, I, no, I, I definitely understand the obsessive personality. I'm the same way. Yeah. When, <laughs> and when a target is, at, is up that I can't hack, I become obsessed until I find a valid vulnerability. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it keeps me up at night sometimes. It's not healthy. But it's also uh -huh. something that I dig deep to, you know, to channel that and be like, okay, I want to hack this company no matter what happens. Yes, exactly. Exactly, exactly. That's very cool. Um, go ahead. Uh, it's like if you find a small issue on a program and then you think about yeah that must be more it must be more you find another one and then you think about it must be more it must be more it must be more so it's just like a continuous process of persistence yeah you have to invest a lot of time uh definitely that's awesome do you take a lot of notes when you hack do you do you take notes on your targets and anything like that how do you do that uh, yeah that that's that's an area i really should work on um I take notes, but they are so scattered. Like, I'm really not, I'm not an older person, per se. So my notes, my tools are scattered. Sometimes I forget in which folder they are. I know there's a tool somewhere, but I don't know in the folder. I don't know if it was on the VPS or my computer sometimes. So I'm that bad. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. And I just write some text files. So. Yeah, it's so you don't use any messy. tools for it. You don't use any note taking tools. Uh, now do you have a recommendation? <laughs> I don't. I'm the same way as you, my friend. You and I are very similar <laughs> when it comes out to note taking. Some of my notes are in my notes app, some notepads. I have my VPS random folders with notes in them. I'm the same way. I just now have gone to the habit of making a folder for every target. 
and then I just dump everything in there just to have it stored somewhere so I don't forget. Yeah, so basically, if you can imagine, I had like a text file. It was called to do dot txt. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like stuff there, stuff there, and the next day or when I'm done, like I added like twenty equal signs. Uh, yeah, so to like make a line and then add it more, 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 more. And now it's like hundreds of kilobytes of to do with random lines there. So yeah, it's it's really hard for me to keep track of my notes. Wow, that's awesome though. I mean, whatever you're doing, it works. You become a million dollar hacker. So you don't have to be super organized for it to work, right? It's whatever works for you <laughs> is what makes you successful. Exactly, exactly. Each, each one has a, like, a different mindset. That's why maybe the, all the nationalities hacking. Everybody's like different backgrounds, different mentality, different education, different everything. That's awesome. So let's talk about uh, getting started again. Do you have any advice you can give to people that are very new to bug bounties who are motivated by folks like you who want to become the next bug bounty hunter? Do you have anything you want to share with them on how to get started, how to stay motivated, and how to progress on a daily basis? Uh, for me, I think we're looking behind. It's really important to realize that this will take a lot of time and be prepared to invest that time. Even if you find something, even if you don't find something, that's not important uh, because you actually learn learn something. That That's what actually helps you in the future. Um, I think it's pretty important to learn how to write the reports. Uh, but this takes, of course, again, time. And uh, for keeping you motivated, uh, every person has its own motivation. Mm. Um, another thing that may be a little yeah, black, uh, I think it's pretty important for you to already be pretty financially stable or be pretty young uh, before you actually want to do this full time. Uh, having like the pressure of finding finding bugs, it's definitely something I would not recommend to anybody. Working under pressure in uh, hacking, it's uh, I think it's a very difficult, uh, very difficult task. Yeah, I think I agree. It's different when you're hacking for fun versus when you're hacking to pay your bills and you really rely exactly. on the money. Exactly. That's, a, that's very well said. I think um, one of the advantages I had when I first started doing bug bounty hunting was I was in my early 20s. I was still in college. My bills were very, very low. And my wife, when we were dating, she was she had the job and I was doing side jobs just to pay my bills. And you know I focus on hacking. So I think having that support and whether you live with your parents or you live somewhere very, very cheap, having those things really, really helps. Yes, yes, definitely. This that's one of the most uh, yeah mature uh, advices that I and also you can give. Yes, it was also the same for me if you think about because I did it in my free time in the beginning, uh, and then I switched because I did the math like what was my salary as a developer, how much I would get from bug bounties, and it was pretty simple math. That's awesome. Uh, how does it feel to be a millionaire hacker? How does it feel? No, no. Let me let me ask this again. How does it feel to make a million dollars, and even better, making a million dollars from hacking? How does that make you feel? It's pretty amazing to uh, realize in which in what time we live in, because uh, th this is a job that didn't exist like seven years ago. It was like unimaginable, yeah. and uh, it's so it's a very new field, uh, and it really makes you think about what uh, how what would the future look like what jobs would there be <laughs> it's it's pretty amazing you know yeah it's um for me it's crazy to think as uh when i was 16 learning about hacking i never thought in my life ever i would be doing the same thing you know 10 14 years later and making a living off of it. So it's cool, you know, it's it's a very reassuring thing to hear from other folks as well. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes, for sure. If you if you actually had the dream that makes it even more wonderful yeah. to actually achieve it. Um tell me 
about your experience in the past three years. So I'm sure there has been some mistakes you made in the past two to three years while you were learning. Is there anything that you have learned that you wish you knew earlier or you think that the new hackers could take advantage of uh, hearing it from you? Um, example, I'll give you one of mine. Um, I wish that I knew more about how much work it takes for a bug bounty program to go up to not give those engineers, so not hassle those engineers to fix my bugs. There's a lot of things that happen in the background, and I wish I knew that early on, so I was a little bit nicer to some of these developers, right? Are there any things you have learned the past two to three years that you wish you knew earlier, or you think that people should know before they get into bug bounties? Uh, yes, uh, so of course, like you said, <laughs> I had the same issue. Uh, also think about um, when you write the report, the trial jerks, are not 100% of that program. They may have absolutely no idea what is going on there. So write your reports very clearly at screenshots videos. Um, also make the difference between the triagers, the program, the hackers. Uh, they don't control everything. Um, and think about the practical attack. Uh, like this also helped me quite a bit to actually try to write the real practical impact of the bugs I submit. Uh, for example, like if you submit an XSS, uh, unfortunately for my experience, on most of programs, it doesn't matter if you do a pop with the domain or if you write an uh, account takeover proof of concept, because like 80% of the cases, you can do that with an XSS, it's pretty easy. Um, but write some lines explaining how you would do that. Like you have the CSRF token in this HTML page. There is no password confirmation for changing email and this and XSS that this to account takeover. Like those many lines. You don't have to write the proof of concept, but sh you should write the actual practical impact of bugs. And for me, if I don't find the practical impact, uh, I don't submit a bug. Uh, sometimes I do it in live hacking events. The results are mixed, but uh, on my day-to-day -day submissions, I just don't submit non-practical findings. Very cool. Um, so let let me think a bit more. Um, I think it would have been better for me to go into Android uh, hacking uh, wow. earlier. A lot earlier. I still have a lot of uh, learning to do there, but it's like uh, there there are not many people that can actually do yeah. that. So for me, that that was a minus. Is uh is Android hacking something that you so is is Android hacking something that you wish you learned more, or are there other other things that you want to learn besides web hacking? Uh yes. So I want to be more specialized in uh on Android hacking, but uh. Not, not. I mean, decompiling the app, changing it, uh, finding endpoints. You're the actual Android-specific client, like with web views and stuff like that, mm -hmm. with uh, insecure storage of sensitive information. Those are the things that I actually learn. I want to learn, and I'm learning a bit. I'm just starting. So, someone's asking, do you know what the safe harbor is? Uh, yes. What is your take on Safe Harbor with bug bounty programs? Uh, I, th I think it's this is also quite a mature step uh, on a program that actually uh, can give the Safe Harbor to researchers. Okay. Um, but for me personally, I don't care if it has or not. Uh, but I think that's because of my background. Coming from Romania, you don't care about uh, those things. That it makes much. sense. It makes sense. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. Um, at a high level, you mentioned about writing a good report. Besides the impact statement that you just mentioned, what are what are some other things you include in your reports to make sure you communicate things, you know, very well to the companies? Um, what are your advices? What is your advice on writing a good report? Um. I usually write a description, a summary, then of course the replication steps, and I always, for, all, for everything, add uh, screenshots or a video. It's very easy to do videos. I sometimes do videos for XSS. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's really fast, you know? It explains, you know, 
a picture is a thousand words and a video is a thousand images. Makes sense. That's very, very valid. So people that are watching, um, again, I want to stress this out. Writing a report makes a huge difference in how much you get paid and uh, how you communicate to the program. Yes, it's very important. I hate to go back to reports to give uh, extra explanations. So I usually uh, just write everything from the beginning there. I don't want to make this ping pong. It's more annoying for me to open my book project again, to redo a specific bug, and then to write more explanations. So I just write everything from the beginning. Well, what do you think the bug bounty community industry is headed in the next three to five years? What do you hope happens or think is going to happen? Uh, what, bug bounty, the bug bounty community in general? Yes, like what do you think some things that are going to happen that are new? Like do you think there's going to be more bug bounty programs? Is there going to be more automation? Like what do you think the industry is headed? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I, I um, There will be more programs. Uh, and I think they will lean a bit more to the IoT, to the Internet of Things, okay. to actual physical devices. Because uh, there are a lot of advances in last years on those on, on those areas, and everything is connected to the to the internet. So you think there's I, going to be more IoT devices coming into the bug bounty scene? Uh, yes, but I personally don't think in this year, like maybe I mean, in a few years. years. Yeah, I agree. Are you going to be doing IoT hacking in a few years? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh -huh. I doubt it, actually. I, I can, I, I want to first focus on web, then also like tangent Android. Yeah. And I, I really like to specialize in a specific thing, not to know more about more stuff. Fair enough. Very cool. Well, so this is usually I end my interview with, um, some very easy questions. It's just fun questions. So the first part of it is I ask you some easy questions. You can answer them. And then the second part is I give it's a word play. I give you a word and you tell me the first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. Okay. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> so let's start with the first, uh, first part of this. Uh, what was your first program you ever hacked on? Brave software. Wow, very cool. I haven't heard someone say that. <laughs> um, what was your first bounty? Uh, Brave Software, the ability to spoof the SSH icon on, on, on HTTP sites. Do you remember how much it was, the bounty for it? Under 100. Do you remember what you did with your first bounty? No. I, everything is like... In, um, it's not separated, so... No, what I'm asking is, do you remember what you first bought with your first bounty? Like what you spent your bounty on? Anything uh, fun or no? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Anything fun? A new computer. Okay. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is the best purchase you have ever done in the past few years with your bug bounty money that you can share? Uh, my apartment where I live now. You bought an apartment. Very cool. That's awesome. Um. If you have to hack on one program for the rest of your life, what program would it be? And if it's private, you can just say it's a private program. It's a private program. Because I, I, I knew the answer to that. I wanted to make sure I say that before you <laughs> mention it. And I think I know what program that is. Um, what's your favorite bug type? Uh, information disclosure. Uh, who are some hackers that you have learned from or collaborated with? Uh, Ron Chan. Uh... <laughs> I actually collaborated with, a bit with CLG very bit this event. Uh, okay. Anshuman. Wow, oh, very cool. Uh, file descriptor. Awesome. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Are there any hackers that you want to participate with or collaborate with that you haven't yet? No. Oh, awesome. That's cool. Um, what is your absolute favorite tool for hacking besides Burp Suite? <laughs> besides Burp Suite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have any. So it's burp? Huh, interesting. Yeah, I just burp a lot. Um, what are some of your favorite hobbies that are not on a computer? Uh, going on the mountains, vacation. 
Yeah. Any any particular spot you have gone to that you really enjoyed? Uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow, very cool. You really like your mountains, huh? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's jump into the second part. This part would be a little bit short, but it would be fine. Um, burp Suite. Burp. Tool. <laughs> XSS. Medium severity. Uh, Param Miner. Awesome. Idor. Uh, under the... Underappreciated. Wow, that's a very cool way to say it. Hacker one. Awesome. As everything changed me. Hacking. Something I love doing. Live hacking events. <sighs> Why the reason I switched to hacker one doing full time there? Recon. Helps you, but it's not everything. And last but not least, programming. Another life. <laughs> well, hey, mate, uh, thank you so much. For those of you who don't know who Cosman is, I have dropped his uh, information in the chat. Uh, please give him a follow on Twitter. Uh, again, one of, the, one of the top hackers I've met. I have the pleasure of meeting at some of these live hacking events. I really appreciate you coming on this stream and sharing your knowledge, your tips, and being honest about everything you have done so far. Uh, so seriously, I appreciate you doing all this and thank you so much for joining me so late, man. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks also for, for having me and I hope everybody enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I learned a lot, so I assume everybody else on the chat. The chat is going crazy right now, dude. Like everybody yeah, I, is, I, <laughs> I can't keep up with this chat right now. You guys are awesome. Uh, give Cosman a huge shout out. Give him some love in chat. Again, man, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at the live, uh, the next live hacking event. Uh, same. See you there. See you, and, man. Uh, Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night, man. Good night. Good night. That was, uh, that was something else. Um, that was a very good interview. Um, I learned a lot. Um, it was probably one of the most honest i'm speechless mind blown by the amount of knowledge uh cosman was willing to share um seriously thank you so much for doing all this uh this was really really cool uh, if you are new to my channel uh the video for this will be on youtube later um, i'm probably going to post it tomorrow because i don't have any content for tomorrow so if you've missed it go to youtube uh subscribe the video is going to be on there um so don't miss out if you want to watch this video again as always i'm live every sunday and tuesdays i don't think i'll be online this tuesday since i'll be in new york so if you're in new york come hang out with me i'll be around uh i won't be online this tuesday because of the travel but again i appreciate all the new subscribers all the new followers thank you so much everyone for joining I'm going to jump on and um, host somebody else. If you want to stick around and watch the person we're hosting, stick around, uh, show them some love. Again, I'll be back online next Tuesday. And yeah, I will see you guys uh, next weekend. But for now, thanks so much again. Um, again, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support and Seriously, I can't thank guys enough. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'm going to host one of my buddies. Uh, stick around again. I want you guys to show.